News first, face to face with Mariam Gunujaya. A very good evening. You're watching Face to Face on TV One, where we dive deeper into Sri Lanka's political arena. I'm Mariam Gunujaya, and our guest this evening is a seasoned politician, I would say, a former Deputy Speaker, former Minister, and SLPP MP Chandima Virakodi. A very good evening, and welcome on the show. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Mariam. Sri Lanka's uh, recent political landscape has been uh, quite dynamic. Uh, we have talks on elections. We also have talks on uh, parliament being dissolved. And uh, this, I would say, definitely highlights the crucial role that uh, parliament plays in uh, Sri Lanka's economic environment and environment as a whole. And uh, let me uh, cut to the chase, uh, Mr. Virakodi. I have a question for you that I think is in the minds of a lot of people in our country. Uh, the sitting president that is running the Kramasinghe came into power, uh, I would say, first of all, entered parliament with no people's mandate. He came through the national list. And uh, for someone without a people's mandate, uh, is now the president of a country with parliamentary mandate. Taking this matter into consideration, how effective do you think parliament is in our country? Well, it is due to a technicality that our uh, uh, law framers have not uh, looked into the the time we uh, uh, brought this constitution mm. into being. Uh, according to the provisions of the constitution, if the sitting president dies or leaves, a uh, president can be appointed to be in office for the balanced term. Mm. So this time, unfortunately, uh, the president who got elected left office leaving almost uh, two and a half years of his term. So, uh, as a result of that, I don't know due to internal politics. The, the mandate was given to SLPP by the people. So, the moment SLPP elected president who got 6.9 million votes left, successor would have come from among close to 150 elected members of that party. But unfortunately, due to internal politics and to uh, exhibiting the fact that that party is meant for a family, main reason being protecting uh, the, the family, an outsider was brought in to chair uh, the parliament as prime minister initially hmm. without giving a senior within the party to succeed due to uh, issues that the family would have faced with in bringing their next of kin hmm. to uh, the, the party top seat. So a person was brought in and uh, as the prime minister, then there was, they had no option but to promote him again uh, to be the president so they could uh, get 134 members to support him to keep him in the seat. And it's like ironical, the number two, that is the prime minister in the country, was also not chosen from uh, the majority SLPP. That again was given to a party that had only three members. That is again a political tactic. This is not, this does not re reflect people's expectations. And the understanding among general public at the moment as was said by the president and the, the government, was that there will be a settlement in the country can be brought about within six to one year, six months to one year, and immediately thereafter an election will be held so that people can appoint their parliament. Because according to the provisions of the constitution, there is no way that the president who got elected for the balance period can dissolve, can call for a presidential election without completing the period for which he has been appointed by the members of parliament. The understanding, the expectation of the people was that there will be an immediate general election so that a parliament that reflects the expectations of this people can be brought back into power. But to date that has not happened. So there is a, a huge concern about legitimacy of this parliament, not legality. There is uh, uh, obviously a lot of people feel 
that the president and the present government uh, is not concerned about the feelings, difficulties, hardships of the people, because they are not answerable to the people. They are not a, a government which is accepted to the majority of this country, which was even accepted during elections. Hmm. Subsequently, a, a, a government that gets elected can be rejected by the people. But this present government, present setup, the president and the, the majority of the cabinet were not even accepted at that point. So that is why people are waiting for an election, for an opportunity to elect a government of their choice as a democratic country. Mr. Virakuri, now this topic elections has been uh, the, on top of much debate, much, much discussion, everyone's talking about when the election is and what the election is. Uh, now, even the founder of the Sri Lanka, Podujana Peramuna, Basil Rajapaksa, said that he thinks it should be a general election. And then we have other factions of the party saying that, no, it's a presidential election, a presidential election must be held. What is your stance? No, this, is, this, this opinion is expressed hmm. not based on the, the, the requirement of the country hmm. or uh, exhibiting the expectation of the people. So, what's the requirement? Or for the of benefit the of the people. This is for the benefit of individuals and the individual parties. At the moment, SLPP strongly believes that days are numbered. Hmm. They can be uh, empowered only till, elect, till an election is held. So, if it's a general presidential election, hmm. they know, you know, they are, they are doing the election commissioner's job prior to elections. They have they are announcing results. They know if they contest presidential together with the sitting president, they are going to lose. Hmm. So, if you lose, if your candidate, presidential candidate loses, hmm. the president who is going to get elected hmm. will cough elections. And then your chances of getting a reasonable number back in parliament is go, is, it will be a dream. Hmm. Because the trend is to to uh, to support the elected president at the uh, parliamentary election that's the case in any any country across the world hmm. so slpp understands that now they have they have announced the result hmm. at the same time president wants to now now, now when people know usually that the, the the trends have been close to final few months of a presidency. People don't take, officials don't take command of the president. Hmm. So this president, being a very senior uh, politician, yeah. who's, who's crafty enough to, you know, handle situation, he's now uh, doing his best to confuse people, now majority of people, I know some people ask, uh, as to whether there will be elections, hmm. because he has a past uh, 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 of postponing Election. two elections indefinitely. Local government, pro provincial government election has been postponed. And local government elections, having called for nominations, having spent a lot of state funds to, to process, having uh, got the candidates to spend their and party money for campaign, abruptly he manipulated to uh, uh, block the elections. Mm. So, at the, 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 uh, the back of the minds of the people, some of the people, they think uh, this guy is capable of doing this. So he is pushing for, he says, I will have a general presidential. Mm. Now, I understand uh, that the latest arrangement has been, at the moment that is being discussed, is to have both elections together, mm. which I think is fair by the people and the country. Because then at least we can have two elections hmm. at the cost of a, a single election, hmm. which is at the moment uh, something that uh, we should look at as a country that has really that is really suffering, and and that uh, as a country that needs political stability in order to attract investment into the country, in order to understand a government that un we have to have a government that understands. Issues of the public. Now, hmm. uh, for a country to develop, uh, we have to, uh, our issue is the economy. We are collapsing. Now, if you look at our uh, micro, medium, small and medium sector, 
263,000 business enterprise have been shut down, 263,000 business enterprise. And being a lady, you know that 200 female business women have committed suicide during the past few days, a few years. And the fact that uh, small and medium sector contributes 52 percent of the GDP. We have only 2,500 2, top companies in this country. But there has hardly been any attention towards that sector. Hmm. And this country, what is the most valuable in this country is our human resource. Human resource, to develop human resource, we must have uh, young, talented, energetic, professional, educated type. Do you but see young, talented, energetic, professional uh, people leading the country? No, they are leaving the country. <laughs> they are leaving the country. So, in order to re retain them in the country, you must, the government have a strategy, should have a strategy. Hmm. But what the government has at the moment done is they have imposed pay tax on them hmm. particularly and they find it difficult to survive as a result of that those who can afford to leave, everyone who can afford to leave has either left or is leaving or is planning to leave. Hmm. So both sectors, I mean for a country to re-emerge economically, you have to uh, give priority to small, micro, small and medium investment and entrepreneurs and then the, the, the young professionals. Bo this government has not been addressing issues of both these sectors, but at the same time they say, okay, now there is electric, there is electricity, there is, there is uh, diesel, the hotels are open. So that elitist, hmm. super rich, are very happy. That's all what they want. And now, recent you, you saw the diesel prices, super diesel prices, uh, hmm. decreased significantly. Yeah. Super petrol was also uh, brought down in a significant amount. So then they can have a, now the New Year uh, holidays are coming, they, no real season is coming. So the rich can really enjoy yeah. with the policies of this country and it is, their days are numbered because they, are, they belong to the elderly uh, generation. But we do not see anything being contributed uh, towards advancement of the, the, the young people and the small and medium people which is uh, I think uh, is, is which cannot be expected from a government that is uh, not concerned. So what should change about in the government? No, we must have. We, a, we need someone who focuses on different income groups. We must right? have a. First of all, we must have a government hmm. that is acceptable to the people. Okay. That we, we must have a government that is concerned about the grievances, hardships of the majority as well as the. Mm. The, the 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 rich. Yeah. I mean, you can't take one side, and you must think of the country as a whole. Mm. You should not be taking sides and uh, making one uh, segment uh, happy. Mm. Uh, country the government should be for the country, for the mm. people. Priority must be to promote the country, develop the country, not to uh, retain power till you live. To, to till you live. So the head of state must change. Absolutely, not only the head of state, and, and I mean, look at the okay, President uh, Vikramar Singh is not a rogue, hmm. with that we must say, but I mean, he does he understand the pulse of the the, the, the majority generation in this country? He's, he's now plus 75. Hmm. Now, he's you take you, he's your grandfather's age. So, do you uh, uh, think that your grandfather understands? how your generation feels? I mean, I, I can't really comment on that because <laughs> my grandmother, uh, grandfather is also not someone from uh, who's lived his life throughout the political, you know, the life and, you know, worked with all of the people who also play tactics, I would say, like you mentioned. Yeah. So that's uh, a different topic, I would say. But yeah. uh, is it, I'm, my question is, is it the president alone or is it the entire government? Because no, no, entire government. President has not been elected by the entire, look at the, the cabinet now. Now, now including parliamentarians. Yeah, including majority of the parliamentarians huh. and the majority of the 
the the cabinet okay. now the cabinet now to this due to this uh, political uh, scenario hmm. or issue yeah president is not in a position to appoint people who are compet competent to handle certain ministries hmm. because he cannot appoint anyone outside the sitting members hmm. now more, not even like you take past few months okay some died some were expelled some were removed but still whatever portfolios will have to be shared among them because the moment he appoints someone from outside hmm. chao chaotic situation will get aggravated yeah so it's a pathetic it, it, it's obviously it shows that there is no uh, political stability there is it is that it's not possible for this type of government to survive for the benefit of the country so that is why i say this i mean you must let the people hmm. appoint a parliament yeah so then they can they can people can decide as to whether to uh, to reelect them or bring new faces in i mean you must given be, people must be given an opportunity hmm. what is not there at the moment is that opportunity people are waiting hmm. for that so what do you think the people require what is the election that the people require both at the same time presidential uh, election first uh, my my first. my personal opinion is like because we are we have to be concerned about cost factor yeah if you can have both elections together certainly hmm. that will be a plus for the country hmm. at the same time if not if not either election i mean since presidential election can't be held uh, till presidential commission beyond uh, the, the 17th the commission October. elections commission yeah. will acquire power as per the constitution only in july hmm. so till such time no one can fix a date yeah but if the president wants if he really concerned about the country and the, the the future of this country without killing another few months hmm. he can call for elections immediately and complete it within a matter of one and a half months hmm. and then there will be a solid government yeah people people's government and then he can uh, go for the presidential election so it's up to a single man to decide hmm. the presidential election of course he can't decide uh, according to the constitution as i said parliamentary is within his control and then other elections can also be held and i mean elections holding elections is only one factor hmm. policy now The, the, there are certain we have to we have to implement certain policies uh, together with the international community imf and various other agencies hmm. we have to have a proper uh, foreign policy we have to maintain our, our foreign relations and we have to with all that we have to be able to uh, look into the the issues of the, now look at education hmm. the children find it very difficult to buy their text the, the exercise books even people find it children find it difficult to go to schools luckily i mean we must appreciate the fact i mean the uh, uh, leader of the opposition sajid premadas openly said uh, that the moment he comes uh, food will be uh, meals will be given to children school children but the sitting president is also doing that yeah he he is doing what the, the leader of the opposition proposed and then the leader of the opposition uh, was you know he, he was known as pad man he was he he wanted to give uh, uh, the sanitary pads to uh, school children hmm. so that was also immediately i mean he, he had the president had all this uh, four and a half years to implement but he, they didn't do it this government the leader of the opposition has been uh, of the opinion from day one hmm. but at least due to the fact that elections are close they are now implementing and and then uh, smart classroom concept yeah he was not only preaching leader of the opposition He, he, in his own way that he can afford to he was he started giving uh, smart classroom but now the government is also doing it yeah. so in a way as opposition and as the leader of the opposition uh, we must be happy he must be happy though he is not in power yeah. present government is now beginning to realize he says the way for, forward for the country but mr virakuri don't you also think uh, you know considering the people's mindset you know i i know of people who are also of the mindset that you know if the job gets done that's all we need so regardless of opposition leader doing it or the president doing it if they get the smart classrooms if they get the meals that's all they care about don't you think it works like that as well no no what is important now in this country okay. to deliver what the country needs for its future 
Yeah. So whether it's done by the leader of the opposition or but don't you think the people would vote for you know? No, no. The people finally, it. people finally, you think now the president and the government think hmm. they can hoodwink people by doing these things towards the latter part of latter few days, few months of the government. Hmm. Now they're going to give uh, rice, 20 kilos of rice sauce on the 11th. Hmm. They're going to give various things, so, but. People, I mean, there is a there is a past history hmm. of people getting attracted for atata and al kilo and all that. But now people are smarter. I don't think people can be uh, fooled by giving people no. Hmm. Who was talking about now? When 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 Sajid Premadas talking about giving pads, he was called pad man and he was bullied. Hmm. People like he does. And then about smart classrooms. Mm. Also, they were, and when he was giving buses, mm. he was called bus driver. Mm. But like he, in his own way, and then he was, when he was uh, talking about medicine, he was laughed at in parliament. But finally, the government had to do the same. And then the government had to appeal to him yeah. to, to contribute uh, to various hospitals in his own. So, this is a, we are representing an opposition that is not only talking. Hmm. We are re not representing a party that is only protesting. Hmm. We are delivering, even being in the opposition, to our, the best of our ability. We, we are not government. Hmm. To the people. It shows that the people understand this is a party, this is a man who understands grievances, pulse of the people. Hmm. That is number one. I mean, do, do you take any successful leader in, in the world? First is. To, I mean, you can, knowledge is secondary. Mm. The, the first is to be a person of people, person who understands problems of the people, pulse of the people. Mm. So yes, he's qualified. Not only that, the, the uh, like knowledge wise, he's, he doesn't just talk. Mm. So people will look at all that, people will want to know what our proposals are, what we suggest uh, as a party, as a government uh, when get elected to resolve the issues and people will just not, now your era is not uh, uh, the, the monologue era, it's a dialogue era. Hmm. So you will not just listen now, when we were very young, we, we used to listen, even in school we used to just listen. But now I know my, 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 my daughter and then they don't just listen, they'll ask question the teacher. Mm, yeah. So we are in, now the, the politicians should understand, we are now in that era. era. So, but unfortunately, the, you take the president, the prime minister and, and the majority of the government, they belong to oh, an era of my parents, grandparents of the youth of this country. Mm. So it, there's a mismatch. This, with this mismatch, what I mean, they are still resorting to tactics that uh, they adopted in 60s, 70s, 80s. Hmm. That is why they are now trying to implement what is suggested, proposed. But that is by, also the same government that's talking about AI and digital world and all of that. Yeah, no, AI and digital world and all that was talked. Even Gotabe Rajapaksa was talking about it. No, hmm. any leader. That is why I said leaders. Now, let's say I'm a politician. When I speak to my advisors, they will advise me, okay, this can be done, that can be done. But if I just like a parrot, tails yeah. only, nothing happens. Just, I mean, this country has had enough policies. This country, even this government has advisors who have brilliant ideas, hmm. who have brought in brilliant proposals. But implementation, to the best satisfaction of the people and the benefit of the country is what lacks. For that you have to have a leader and a team. Hmm. So that is why we say SJB as a competent leader who understands from the international level to the grassroots level, hmm. from the elitist person to the poorest man. Mr. Virakuri, while you speak on that, I wanted to come back into parliament. Now this is the people's problem, into yeah. parliament. Um, now, if I recall right, Parliament was based on the Westminster model, where we had the uh, the upper house, the Senate, the House of Representatives, and the lower house. Uh, 
uh, but this was abolished in 1971. Now, if you have four layers, that means we have four layers of accountability. But now this came to one house, you know, one layer. That's why people are always of the opinion that parliament is biased and, uh, you know, uh, it's very easy to pass bills and laws. And, you know, even very recently, the banking amendment bill, there was no proper debate. Vote was held, they passed it. The no confidence motion of Kehli Rambukwan, who is in jail now, passed, nothing. So why do you think there are issues like that? What can you all actually do? You know, you all are also well, part of parliament, but still, Well, well we, we have to go in for, I understand, we have to think of amendments to the constitution, think of a new constitution, yeah. all that. I mean, that process has been going on, but uh, nothing has been finalized. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is not the time now this president uh, has got some people to talk about constitutional amendments at this moment, hmm. which is not possible under any circumstances. This government has only three months. Yeah. By July, this president uh, loses his power. His power will be taken over by the uh, Elections Commission. So, but at the same time, the, the way in which the, the now, other, even though we don't have upper house, lower house concept, yeah. we have commissions, we have the constitutional council. But the way, the when you look at the conduct of But everything speaker, that comes to a vote gets passes with majority vote. No, no, that, that, that you cannot avoid in a democracy because go government is always uh, in majority. Hmm. But the, that is why we have, we have passed Act, uh, constitutional amendments to set up uh, independent commissions. Hmm. But look at how they have been acting. Now the speaker, I mean, you know, as a child when you were in a society, to say, let's say to appoint a monitor in grade one, hmm. when only when there is a the, the division where both sides are the same in number, hmm. whoever who conducts gets the discretion to vote the discretionary vote. That is there in, yeah. in, in any at any level, but this time when when over the appointment of the uh, IGP, what happened? Two, four, where they, according to the constitution, there has to be a certain number, uh, more five five votes. There were four in favour, two against, and two refrained. Speaker didn't say anything. The speaker speaker. We, by look at it, when you look at it, is not in a position to use a discretionary vote because it's obviously four and two. Hmm. On his way home, or when he re reached home, he decides. Someone tells him probably. Yeah. Look here, take the 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 two refrain that's also uh, ones who voted against. Then they are four four to four. You vote. Can you vote like that? I mean, there's the, there is blatant violation. So. And, and, and about this uh, acts also, online safety bill. Any bill for that matter has to be approved by the sectoral oversight committee of the respective subject. Otherwise, it cannot be taken up for debate in parliament, even for a vote. Yeah. But online safety hmm. bill, uh, the sectoral oversight committee did not pass it. Report was not submitted. In spite of that, we... So we we like we don't we didn't have to interfere, but we together with the leader of the opposition made representations to the president, to the speaker, and informed him that there has not been a, uh, a certificate that has not been looked into. He checked up, he found, but he thought that it was debated and passed, and and the, the unfortunately the. The, the same people who passed it are now trying to bring in amendments to the same act. So that it, that is obviously because this government is clueless. They are being dictated by uh, people who are not answerable to the country. So it is not the, the, the I mean, not the fact that there is no uh, provision. Yeah. There is provision in the constitution. There is provision in the law. Now, even like when you speak to certain um, officials, also, what they say at committees is, uh, sorry, there is no law. Yeah. But technically, there is. 
So, Mr. Virakode, I know we could keep on speaking about the parliamentary system, the governing system of the country, the head of state and uh, everyone under him and above us who are controlling our country, but time uh, permits to discussion only. So thank you very much for joining us. That was uh, uh, MP, former minister and the former deputy speaker of Sri Lanka, Mr. Chandima Virakode. Thank you very much for watching us. That's it from us for tonight. Good night and take care.